here's a story. Recently, I had this exact conversation with one of our clients. Well, Alex, this OCR thing that you built for us is great, but how do I know that it's picked up the right stuff? Can it like highlight on the page, you know, like with a highlighter, what it saw, well, the, what are the words that it picked up on? Well, you know, that's a great idea. How hard can it be, right? First of all, you have to sort out the OCR thing. Don't just need to get any OCR service out there. You have to get one that gives you the coordinates to the like words. Now, you would also think that that same OCR service would provide you with like a way to generate the image with the highlight on top of the words. Well, you're wrong. Pretty much none of them do that. So at that point, you have to find another service who will take that image, take the coordinates and kind of like blend them together and give you an image with the highlight. So how hard can it be you might ask well it's somewhere between assembling ikea furniture blindfolded and maybe diffusing a bomb with mittens on okay i exaggerate but it's much easier when you know what you're doing let me show you how First things first, let's kick things off with the demo. And uh, what we have here is a uh, handwritten note. Now, as a matter of fact, this is Keith Richards' uh, dry cleaning bill from like uh, the 60s or something. Now, I wouldn't say that this is the best handwriting I've ever seen. Let's go ahead and test this out. The text that I want to find is, let's say, trousers. We do have trousers twice in this text. All we have to do is just press process invoice. Shortly after, we should get a status update, starting up, applying highlights, and here we go. There you go. Trousers one, trousers two. Let's try this with uh, another word like skirt, 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 skirt. Let's uncheck, recheck, done. Check this out. Skirt. How cool is that? The setup of this whole thing, like I said, was hard to figure out, but it's actually not that bad. Let's jump straight into how to set this whole thing up in Make, because as you can see, I'm using Airtable. There's not much to discuss. There's no link tables. It's just Airtable. So let's jump straight into Make. Now, first things first, we need to set up our make.com account. If you haven't done so already, Make is one of our favorite platforms when it comes to automation. If you're using Zapier or something like that, take a look at Make. It's the next level link in the description below it's going to help the channel thank you so much plus you're going to get a free one month pro account plus 10,000 operations which is really cool go ahead and set that up the next thing is to create a new scenario i've already created mine first of all add a webhook add a custom webhook grab this url grab yours not this url literally copy the address to clipboard jump back into airtable and we're gonna jump into automations we need to create one automation over here so just press on this little thing the trigger is of course when process invoice is checked we run a script and this is a script very simple script that we use all day long just make sure that you replace this webhook with your webhook the other thing that we can need to do is add our little input variable and the value the variable is record id make sure that it's exactly written out like so and then we have the value which all you have to do is just press the blue button add this record id and that's it you're done finish editing don't forget to turn it on <laughs> because otherwise none of this will work let's jump back into make and let's take a look at the rest of the scenario because there's plenty to kind of like unpack here first of all let me just give you the lay of the land right so how does this whole thing uh, work. We have uh, this part which deals with OCR. It gathers all the words and gives them coordinates essentially. You can go ballistic with this in the sense that you can get the coordinates for every letter of every word but we're just exploring words here. The other section, this section, deals with how do we apply those coordinates onto that same picture technically right now we are applying like one set of words like we saw with trousers if you have the word trousers twice you will get two images but technically you can have one image and all the instances of where that particular word appears first of all we grab the record so once we trigger we just basically grab that record like so the next thing is we update that record by saying starting up 
in the status of that record. Next, we get the file. We basically take the attachment URL from module number three and uh, we grab that file. Next, and this is part of the solution, Google Cloud Vision. So go get yourself a Google Cloud Vision account. I think there is like a decent free tier that comes with it. These are my settings, simple as that. And, and I'm using the run text detection OCR within an image. What do I do next? Add an iterator and I push in my text annotations inside of this iterator because it's an array. Now at this point, I have this little filter here and what it does, it basically kind of uh, says that, look, if you just find the word trouser, still bring it in, right? We're not being strict essentially, just like we had here in the picture, we have uh, trousers. If I'm looking for the word trouser, it will still pick it up. That's why we have that filter over here. Make sure that it's set up like so. Then the next thing is we get the vertices and these are like the coordinates for each word. And again, we just iterate through them and we group them up like so in a JSON array. Now let's talk about this quick little JSON array that I've built. My source is of course number six, my iterator, my original iterator. And this is what the data structure looks like for my JSON pack. Again, very straightforward. You can just go ahead and copy this as is. If you want, you can download the blueprint of this whole make scenario down in the description below. The next thing that I'm doing is of course I am adding the vertices from 11 and that's it. That gives us a very nice JSON string that looks like so. Then we have two paths. Now they are pretty much exactly the same thing, but this is the second part, the solution, right? The what is that service that takes the coordinates and actually puts them on top of the image and highlights it and it's all great. It's called Upload Care. The more I'm looking into that service, the more amazed I am at what it can do for like images and videos. Upload Care, we just upload our file, get the file, files get stored upon uploading. Then we update the user again, just to say that, hey, here is the file UUID because we don't want to keep uploading the same file. We just want to store it back in Airtable, store the file ID in Airtable. And then, you know, if we want to look up another word or something like that, we can just reuse that UUID. And finally, I'm adding the status down here. I'm just applying highlighting. Here's the most important part of this whole thing. We parse the JSON that we've just received. And again, data structure, just go add my data structure, give it a name, press generate and just copy this as is like so just copy it and when you're creating this just go add generate sample data paste it and press generate i've already done it but once you're done press save and you will have your data structure essentially my parse bounding poly is that thing that's what i've done right there and then we have our json string that we map from uh, module number eight and here we go first of all we have four different variables. We have variable A, B, C, and D. Variable A, this is what it looks like. This is what you need to do. Variable B, this is what it looks like. This is exactly what you need to do. <laughs> variable C, this is what it looks like. And this is exactly how you need to set this up. Variable D, this is what it looks like. And this is how you need to set this up. Construct URL. This is the interesting thing. This is the URL that we need to basically now shortly push into Airtable. And this is what it looks like. I'm mapping the file UID. Rect, I'm also giving it a color. You can play with this. I think this is like an RGB with an alpha channel with like a transparency channel. So yeah, play around the color if you want. And this is how we map A, B, C, and D. I believe you can stack these if you wanna have multiple highlights. You can play around with this URL and you can like add multiple boxes, essentially multiple highlights. Forward slash dash, forward slash preview, forward slash. <laughs> That's it. Then we just aggregate all of the above into the file URL that is required by Airtable. And in Airtable, we just update that record again by saying done and mapping the marked attachments array over here. That's it. There's nothing else. The bottom part of this thing essentially goes with, you know, the asset ID not being or rather being there. The top part that we just kind of like described basically says that if the asset ID doesn't exist, in other words, this is the, brand, the first time we ever seen this picture. Asset ID doesn't exist. Let's go ahead and upload it to upload care and, and do our thing. In this case, the asset already exists. The asset 
ID already exists in our Airtable database. And we just need to kind of like rerun it. Who knew that something so simple in terms of an idea could be so freaking damn complicated? <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.